Michael Greenstein. He has officiated four regionals, his 15th NCAA tournament. Jerry Heater, his 14th NCAA tournament. And Dwayne Gladden, in his 15th NCAA tournament, retiring after this year's tournament, after 32 years as an official. And away we go in Orlando. Beekman has it first for the Cavaliers. Furman starts in the man-to-man, -man, and that's Gardner's game. <laughs> Mid-range jump shot. And Kihei Clark, obviously a great facilitator. Nice pocket pass right there. Here come the Paladins, finishing in first place with Sanford. They go inside, knocked away. The try in there was by Heen. Nice defense by the Cavaliers. They're a terrific defensive team. Driving inside is Beekman with a whistle and a foul. Well, a little bit of a change in the starting lineup oh, here God. for Paladins, anticipating the hard show on the pick and roll and slipping out of it, something teams try to do to Virginia on a consistent basis. Lawson had picked up the foul on the previous play. Another turnover. Here's Clark the other way, working into the defense of Pagis. Takes it in, finds the big man inside, and they can't get it with Shedrick. Another try. That time it drops. Shedrick making an impact early. Nice job by Virginia getting back. It's hard to get out and run against these guys. Here's Bothwell. We were talking about him with Heen. And outside, Foster. He'll take a long shot. Shedrick with the rebound. And here come the first place team in the ACC, Virginia. 25 and 7. Conference record of 15 and 5. Beekman working inside. Gardner. Into Heen. Got the two. Oh, what a great start for Virginia offensively. Paladins of Furman from Greenville, South Carolina. Have not been in the tournament since 1980. 43 years. Swasson tries to corkscrew in there. Wide open three. Heen. Well, that's what Heen does. He's a spot up three point shooter. Even though he's one of their big guys up front, you'll rarely see him inside the arc in Furman's offense. Well, they probably had to put that play in their offense. It didn't look really good, but it got Heen a wide open shot, and Furman is going to have to make some of those threes. Furman makes the 20th most in college basketball in Division I. Shot clock at six. They work it down, Franklin inside. Oh, congested, but he got it to go. Tough oh shot, and you're going to see that shot clock down at six and below a lot today at both ends of the floor. And Virginia does not mind playing at the end of the clock. Another three. He can't hit that one. And the rebound by Jaden Gardner. But I like what Furman did there. Attacking out of the pick and roll, throw it back to Slauson. Slauson is obviously a good scorer, but he can really pass and attack Virginia's rotations. Cavaliers number 14 in the last AP college basketball poll. Lost to Duke in the tournament. And up high they went that time as they were looking for Shedrick. Hit and fouled on the play and down he goes. And it's a foul called on him. Let's take a look at the keys to the game, guys, presented by Great Clips. Well, for Furman, look, don't be cavalier with the ball. Possessions are at a premium in this game. You can't give away possessions, and then we've already talked about they've got to find open three-point shots. And for the Virginia Cavaliers, obviously everything is based on their defense. They have to continue to play well defensively, but all season long for the Cavaliers, they run into these four, five-minute scoring droughts. They can't afford those today. Shedrick is the leading free-throw percentage shooter for the Cavaliers at 79%. Virginia has scored in all six of their trips, and the other way comes Furman. Pagis. Swasson goes down low and finds Bothwell. He was a first team all SOCON selection. And I think Slauson's ability to pass the ball is his greatest strength as a big guy. He can score it, but he really facilitates for other people. He averages three a game, coach, and they go with the shot by Beekman, who is shoved down the shot. The foul is called, and Bothwell will pick up his first personal moments ago. 
Well, Stan, this is what you're talking about. Kihei Clark had to come and help out against the penetration, and that left Bothwell alone underneath the basket. They're trying to put pressure on the ball, are the Cavaliers, but Slauson is big. He can see over that pressure. And the thing that helps him, as it does all passers, Dan, as you know, is the fact that he can shoot the three makes you close out on him, and that opens up passing angles. You can't just lay back in the lane on Slauson. Ryan Dunn has checked in for Virginia, our freshman from Freepoint, New York, and Ben Vanderwall has come in for the Paladins. Well, another place where Virginia has struggled with their struggles on offense in the month of February in particular, they've struggled from the free throw line, and you saw two of their best free throws. Oh, that's sailing in. Count it and a foul. What we're seeing Slauson is passing and his ability to put it on the floor. This is a highly skilled guy. There's a reason he was the SoCon Player of the Year. See for yourself. Kevin Harlan, Stan Van Gundy, Dan Bonner, and Lauren Shahadi were in Orlando. And every time the Cavaliers have touched it, they've scored. They're on top by five. Furman started 0-2 with a turnover. They're three of four since, Dan. Well, Kevin, they did miss one shot, but they got the rebound and put it back in. So as you're, you're right, every trip down the court they have scored, and yet, and yet they're only ahead by five points. And here's a Slauson who we just saw sailing in with a, a, a nice emotional dunk for a team that has not been to this tournament for a long, long time. No, they haven't, but they haven't had teams like this every year. They've been good for a long time, but this is a special team. Cavaliers did not make the NCAA tournament last season. They were 21 and 14. Cavaliers are in white. Paladins are in purple. Franklin is down low. Shot clock is down to nine. Defense of Williams is on him. With the switch, Clark. Penderwall was defending. Here come the Paladins the other way. They have won six consecutive games in 14 of 15. I think Slauson out on the perimeter is a tough matchup for Gardner. He's a tough matchup for just about anybody. Long shot off by Williams, and they're trying to save it in there with Slauson hurdling his body out of bounds. It goes to the Cal Valier. As you take a look, it's 43 years, and there's a lot of differences between now and Stan then. Yeah, I would say gas certainly is not at a dollar 19 now. How far could you get for a, on a dollar 19 of gas? Like, could you get from one stoplight to the next? <laughs> and now you couldn't get from one gas station to the next. No, you're right. You're right. And we now have 363 Division One teams, not 262 like in 1980. Beekman down low, finding the open man. Done, and outside the shot won't drop. And the other way they come, Carter Witt, who's a sophomore from Raleigh, with the ball, and a transfer is Witt with the whistle, and it's on Virginia, and it goes on Gardner, who picks up his first. Well, Slauson was going to slip that pick and roll, anticipating the hard show from Gardner. Gardner went with him and grabbed him a little bit. Keep in mind that Virginia is missing Ben Vanderplas, and so that makes Gardner really important, much more important than usual. If he's out of the game for very much, they really lose some offense. He cannot afford to get into foul trouble. Slauson has just left the game for Furman. And they got it for Williams right now. You see Tony Bennett playing the matchup game a little bit. As soon as Slauson went out, he gave Gardner a rest, Dan. Bring Shedrick back in to play against Huey, who's not as big a threat on the perimeter. And he's going to try to keep Gardner matched up with Slauson all day long. Dan Furman turns it over for the second time. Well, and Tony Bennett, uh, you know, I thought he could have caught that ball, and he just he just didn't. And Tony was a pretty good shooter, so <laughs> Jesse Wallace <laughs> knocked that down. Yes. At UW Green Bay, his dad, the legendary Dick Bennett, watching today. Well, we think he's watching. Sometimes he can't. He can't watch. Right. The nerves are tough to control. Shedrick on top. They got done. And back to Clark, who tries to penetrate with a nice fake. And inside, feeding Shedrick. It's a turnover. 
And that's a problem that Shedrick has sometimes. He's just not very strong on the inside. Bothwell will take it in. Rejected inside. Nice defense by Beekman, who is the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. He's already got a steal to go with that block. Look at him weave and drive inside. That's a foul. He's the ACC Defensive Player of the Year because he can do things like this. He catches up after getting beat, and so he blocks the shot. But I think that for Virginia to be really good, he has got to score, and attacking the basket is a great way for him to do that. He averages nine points a game, and Dan, to follow up on the defense of this Virginia team, sixth fewest points they allow in all of college basketball at about 60 points a game. You will look long and hard before you find a better defensive backcourt than Reese Beekman and Kihei Clark. Oh, absolutely. I mean, those guys are outstanding, put pressure on the ball. Now, look, Furman's got a good backcourt. Pagese is a great ball handler. Witt is very solid. But they don't face defenses like this every night. No one does. So Furman scores the seventh most points, averaging 82 a game, number eight in Division I in scoring. They've been over 90 points nine times this season. Slossing back in and traveled. Oh, yeah. the crippling violation as he was trying to get to the side. First four coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues tonight, 7 o'clock on ESPN2. And for more information on games and times and listings in your area, go to NCAA.com. Very interesting. That time Ryan Dunn was matched up against Slauson, and he is a better matchup for Slauson on the outside. Let's see if Slauson tries to take him down low. McNeely and Team Murray are both in now for the University of Virginia, with Beekman going down low. Here is McNeely. The defense on him of Vanderwall. Driving inside and trying to scoop it up that time. Murray can't get it. Picked up, no, on the shot by Shedrick. Saved inside by Slauson. A couple of point blank range opportunities for the Cavaliers. It's Witt. Well, again, Dan, you mentioned it earlier. You can see Furman trying to push the ball up the floor. But Virginia gets back as well as anybody in the country and gets their defense set. It's hard to run on this Virginia team. Here's Witt, the Wake Forest transfer. Swashen has it. Shot clock at four. Moves inside here, working on Dunn. And it's picked up in there. Nice rebound offensively by Vanderwall. Outside with three off. It was tapped that time by Beekman. Saves the ball. What a great play by Ooh. Beekman. Wow. Stan, they have nobody in the post at all. From, and they're all beyond the three-point line. Virginia only turns it over eight times again. Here's a long shot. Done. Three. No. Rebound offensively. Beekman. No reset. That was a very quick shot for Virginia. Like I said, only eight turnovers a game. That's the fewest in Division One. But right there, they turn it over. That's the announcer jinx. You jinxed them. I know it. Again. You jinxed them. That one's on. Tony Bennett should not be upset at the player there. He should be upset at Kevin Harlan. <laughs> and, and he will be upset at Kevin Harlan, but he's upset with all turnovers all the time. <laughs> well, I, well, we're both from Green Bay, so we can't get too upset on yeah, that. And, and look, his teams rarely turn the ball over. His dad was the same way. And I was telling you guys that yesterday, my brother years ago talked to Dick Bennett, had gone to one of his practices and said, guys, you guys always turn the ball over among the least of any team in the country. You know, what do you do to do that? And he said, Jeff, that's easy. Don't play the guys who turn it over. Geese <laughs> going into Clark. Rebound inside. Can't get it to go right on the doorstep. And it was a chance for Heen to put it in and could not. So the Paladins fall back on defense. 27 wins for them. That is a school record. About 5,000 students go to Furman. One of the most beautiful campuses in all the country. A place to certainly put on your places to go. Clark finding the cutting down off that line. That was a big time pass. He looked him off looking at the roll man. The guy started to rotate, and he's able to get the ball to Dunn. And at the end of the shot clock. The geese, Heen, inside Slauson with a lot of traffic. And outside, wide open, the geese a three. Rebound inside is collected by Dunn. Seven consecutive misses for Furman. 
contested threes. Yes. It's always Clark. late in the shot clock where it's hard to get a shot. If you're going to play Virginia, the biggest thing to me is you have to be ready for the grind. Murray trying to hit the cutting clunk, and out of bounds it goes. Ten and a half to go in the half. Furman scoreless since the last time out. The Paladins, the Cavaliers, all a part of the first round of the NCAA tournament. Coached by Tony Bennett, who moments ago spoke with our Lauren Shahadi. Coach, they're spread out on offense. How do you continue to contain? Well, we got to try to keep the ball out of the paint and contain our own guy in the dribble. That keeps us at home a little more, and then we can get to the shooters. But, you know, they're doing some short rolls, slipping screens, so they're challenging to guard. We just got to keep laying it down every possession and then trying to work real hard and get the quality shots. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you, Lord. Tony Bennett, uh, Stan Van Gundy, and his Cavaliers have the best record overall in the ACC the last six seasons. Yeah, I mean, it's just been a consistently good program and you're going to get consistent defense they're going to take care of the ball they're going to execute and I, the thing that impresses me the most and Dan's seen them a lot more than I have they're as mentally tough as any program in the country that's a three-point shot which goes in Buffwell trains it from outside Leading score at 18 a game, and Danny's a 34% three-point shooter. But he can shoot it, and there was nothing wrong with that defense. They were right in his face. McNeely had it knocked away. Bothwell tries to dive at it. Here come the Cavaliers the other way. It's Clark. The Geese will trail him into the paint. They try to go down low. A lot of congestion down there for Gardner. He's in a street check, and he tries to get away, and a foul. May have been out of hand. We talked about Bothwell's ability to score, and there's nothing wrong with Reese Beekman's defensive positioning, but that guy's a heck of a scorer. Now, what the call is here is they're in the cylinder. That he, everybody has like an imaginary right. cylinder around them. You can't get in that area, and they did and made contact. Bothwell picked up his second personal foul. Here's Franklin with the ball. The Indiana transfer, and it's off to Clark. They quickly blitz him. Down low, driving. Shedrick again, flushes it. I think Furman's a little overextended defensively, Dan, and opening stuff up in the paint for Virginia, a team whose weakness is probably shooting the ball on the perimeter. I think they've got to try to make them make some jump shots. But geese into Clark. Rebound by Shedrick, rips it off the iron. He's collected his fifth rebound. Clark the other way. It will be Virginia's ball. This is just a great pass, and the two Furman players got tangled up with one another. It's great to help out on the screen, but you either got to get help or get back. And they got neither. Slauson was afraid to get there. Stepped short, didn't want to pick up the foul. And Furman checks out, and Beekman coach checks in. Furman usually does a much better job on their rotations than that. Slauson very late right there. And we've seen Kihei Clark already today make three outstanding passes. They're trying to pressure him, and I understand that, but you've got to pressure him under control. Clark. There he goes again, driving on Pegues. And vacuumed in inside by Garrett Heen. He's a junior from Charlotte. He's got the ball right here. Pegues. Hard move and a whistle. Alex Williams was taking it. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Franklin picks up his second person. Well, Alex Williams is about as strong as it gets. And he played a little bully ball there, taking the ball to the basket. Franklin's going to have to go to the bench with his second foul. And McNeely is back into the game. Dan, you and I have uh, covered a lot of 13 versus 4 matchups. 13 seeds over the past four NCAA tournaments are 5 and 11. So uh, they've had some success. Well, they've had some success, and a lot of it has to do with matchups, and I think this is actually a very, a very favorable matchup for the 13th seed. Yeah, but this Furman team, this is different for them. They average 82 points a game. 
They have 11 points in 12 minutes here. <laughs> Clark. Shedrick had a screen, switch on defense into Shedrick. And over Heen, and ricocheted off the hands, and Heen finally grabs onto it. Well, you really need your big guy to finish that inside. In the corner, Foster, three! Your big guy misses one at point-blank range, and then that gives the opportunity for your opponent to run down the court and get a three. And a five-point game with under eight to go in the first half. Given their choice, that's how Furman would like to play. Get out in transition and find shots before Virginia can set that outstanding half-court defense. P.A. Clark. It's Beekman. Shot clock down to nine. Feeding Gardner. Rebound. Foster. It's a three. Got it! Alex Williams. Well, both those threes, back-to-back -back threes, in transition. Virginia not getting set. You don't see that happen to the Cavaliers a lot, but that is the best way for Furman to attack this defense. Don't have to face it. Dan Furman on a 10-2 run. McNeely will hit a shot. Much need for the Cavaliers. The pace at which Virginia plays keeps them in the game against anybody, but it keeps anybody in the game against them. Pagese. Three. Down he went. Whistle. And Clark was defending. First on Clark. Six and a half in the half. Virginia's on top by four. It's the 13th seed against the four. And the Paladins going right at the ACC Virginia Cavaliers. The coach by Bob Ritchie. And moments ago, our Lauren Shahadi caught up with him. Some momentum, Coach. What can you say about your shot selection so far? Well, it's getting a little bit better. Yeah. We're getting a little bit better of a rhythm offensively. A little stuck, too much dribbling early. Their defense is really good. We've got to be out of space and we've got to move it. I think we've done a little bit better job of that here lately. Coach, thank you. Thank you. So Furman out of Greenville, South Carolina, began the season, guys, 13 and 6. They finished 14 and 1. Dan, what uh, what happened as they turned their season around? Well, it's one of those situations. They played some pretty good teams early in the season, and then once they get into conference play, you know, when you're in a one big league, you have a chance to actually build your team. And sometimes uh, in the bigger leagues, you don't have a chance to do it because you've got to win all your games. Pagese exactly. at the line was taking a three and fouled on it, so three free throws coming up for him. Yeah, and free throws have been a little bit of a struggle for Pagese. A little under 70% as he misses that one. But there's no worse defensive play, Dan. The worst thing you can do defensively is foul a three-point shooter. Even a guy who's not great here, Pagese is a 35% three-point shooter, and you turned it into a 70% play. There's nothing worse you can do. Clark had picked up the foul. His first, Lauren, what do you have? First, Lauren, what do you and Coach Ritchie told me he's gained so much perspective, Kevin, over the years. He said in my second year at Furman, we were dominant. We beat Villanova. Everything was falling into place. But I was miserable personally. I'd wake up with nightmares about getting fired. I was caught up in this college basketball world. It's a beautiful world, but it's not the only world. He said, now I just live. I find my joy every day. Faith, family, and hoops. I have to have balance. Beekman inside. Lauren, thank you. He is a... Uh... A very impressive coach, Bob Ritchie is. 39 years of age, loves his job, loves South Carolina, living in that state with a good-looking drive by Slauson, slicing for two. Well, so much for my theory that Dunn is a better <laughs> matchup for him out on the perimeter. Well, Slauson's just so talented off the dribble. Oh, and a drive inside. Clark can't get it. Fought for, claimed, nope. Beekman couldn't vacuum it in. On the ground, picked up, up, and Gardner can't convert with the Furman foul. And digging in there was Alex Williams. Follow Highlight Her for everything you need to see her do in sports and culture. Scan the QR code now and don't miss another moment. 
at the free throw line is Jaden Gardner, Dan. Kevin, what or Kevin and Stan, what you're seeing is how many layups has Virginia missed? Now they haven't been uncontested shots, but in the Cavaliers' offensive struggle, when they struggle offensively, they tend to not convert those kind of shots. Well, and Kia Clark, quick, under control, can get to the rim on just about anybody, but he struggles to finish, as a lot of really small guards do, and he's missed a couple today. Here is uh, Gardner at the line. He is a transfer from East Carolina, from Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Alex Williams picked up his first foul. By the way, that ends a 13-4 Furman run with Wick. Back in the game and at the control. Swasson fought three. It's a foul on Virginia inside. It goes on Dunn. Assessed his first, the freshman, Ryan Dunn. Slauson puts the ball down, and this time Dunn does a much better job moving his feet, and he gets called for the foul because that arm comes down. I don't know whether he made any contact or not, but when that arm comes down, that's almost an automatic for an official. Yeah, they see that, and, and he didn't need to do it, as you know. I mean, I just needed to stay straight up. He couldn't have played the defense much better on that drive. Would have been a difficult shot. You know, for Furman, an interesting part of the motivation for this season. Last year in the Southern Conference Tournament, Dan, they lost on a 35 Five foot buzzer beater and Bob Ritchie said we have taken that and kind of lived with that on our shoulder all season long it, it has served as as great motivation boy it sure has <laughs> and they talked about that all year they whether it be a stumbling block or a building block and they made it a building block good point done approaching five to play they double Gardner but Dunn's got to get out of it Gardner tries to squeak through and does and watching this Virginia team getting ready for this, there's nobody I ended up loving on their team more than Gardner. A tough guy that helps you win in a lot of ways. Keen was in there, and the ball out of bounds, and the shot clock at 20. Just so good inside, quick spin, and then he's so strong. Up through contact and finishing the play. Great around the basket. It's interesting. He actually froze Heen. The guy was coming to help. He thought he was coming the other way. They've got it out of bounds now, but you saw Furman, even after the made basket, pushing the ball up the floor. They know they have to play with tempo. Bothwell swerving to the paint. Gardner grabs the rebound. And Beekman just pushed him off his line far enough to get him to miss that shot. McNeely in. Done on the side. Rick is watching Beekman. Got the screen, takes it inside. And he, Beekman, has eight. That's really important to get an offense of him from him because Franklin is in foul trouble, and he's another guy who they look for for offensive contributions. Yeah, Franklin actually their leading scorer on the year. In with Wake Forest transfer down the lane, kicks it out, sails out of bounds. With the turnover. 3.53 to go. Fourth turnover for the Paladins. They trail by five against number four, Virginia. Beautiful day here in Orlando, Florida. And so far, plus 12 points, shooting threes for Furman, countered by the eight points that uh, Virginia has scored in the paint over the Paladins so far. Well, one of the things, look at the three-point shooting. Furman has made four three-point baskets, and most of those have been in transition. Virginia has not scored from outside yet, so that's a 12-0 advantage right there for the Paladins as they have been able to get down the court and push the ball up. Furman is running to the corners, and as they run to the corners, they're finding open shots. And it's rare to see against Virginia. Virginia, one of the best teams in the country at getting back and getting their defense set, but this is how Furman has played all year, so it's strength against strength. And Furman's finding shots. And one of the things Virginia has to do to help themselves is to take good shots on the offensive end so they can get back on defense. 
McNeely, that's a good looking shot. He is a freshman from Polka, West Virginia. A proud Polka dot. Wait. <laughs> dot? That's, the, that's, that's their, their nickname. high school nickname. The, the Polka, Polka dot. dot. I love it. It's the best ever. Swanson in the corner. Buffwell three. <laughs> Rebound inside is snared by Beekman. Lauren? Kevin, the dot mascot was first referenced in 1928. It was during a football game, and a reporter exclaimed, hey, they look like a bunch of red polka dots running around the field. It stuck their school <laughs> motto, once a dot, always a dot. You, but I'm sure you already know that. You cannot make that up. Right? How fun. Gardner inside, twisting. <laughs> and the rebound by Pagese. I know we have people from Polka, West Virginia watching this we game. We do, we do. If you can send me a polka Polka Dots t-shirt, double XL, I will wear that everywhere. Foster three, rebound inside by Tun. Now even Reggie Miller never did that. No. But begged for gear? Begged for, yes, for swag. I'm proud to do it. If I had a Polka Dots t-shirt, oh, I'd be wearing that everywhere. Pulling the trigger, Beekman inside for two, with two and a half to go in the first half. And here comes Virginia now. They, they endured that 13-4 run by Furman, but now the ball's going in the basket for them, so they're stretching the lead out. And they're on an 8 nothing run right now. Well, look, they're just wearing them out in the paint. Furman's got to try to keep the ball out of the paint and see if this Virginia team can make some jump shots. Swanson backing his way in. What haven't we seen from him, Dan? We've he's seen done, drives. Everything. We've seen passes. We now see him going inside in the post to the jump hook. This is a very versatile, multi-skilled guy. McNeely from long range. Rebound is snared by Swanson. He's grabbed four. Galloping with the spin. And met by the defense of Dunn. Now for Geese. Give him three. First basket today. Boy, that's a good answer. And he's much happier to see McNeely guarding him than he is to see Kihei Clark guarding him. You aren't kidding. And that's what happens in transition. You get some of those opportunities when teams can't get their defense set. Gardner and Foster. Oh, what a great defensive play by Foster. Swanson. Well, that's Foster's game. He's a defender and a three-point shooter, a true three and D guy. Two veteran teams, Swanson three. And corralled by McNeely. And here come the Cavaliers. One of the problems that Virginia has when they throw the ball down low to Gardner, they've got to get the defense out of there because they're able to double team him. Foul on Furman. With 51 seconds to go. That's on Bothwell. It is. Bothwell will pick it up, and that is his third, their leading scorer. Well, he just got tangled up with, who is that, Murray? Well, that's really a costly foul to pick up your third foul, Dan, away from the ball on a guy who is not really a scorer for Virginia. Like, you can't even get caught up in those battles. It's simply not worth it at that point. Let him throw the ball to Murray. Here is Murray, the New Zealander at the line, coming up on AT&T at the half. Scores and highlights in all the latest NCAA tournament news. All coming up on AT&T at the half. Murray at the line. Last year, or the last time, I should say, the Cavaliers were in the tournament. They didn't make it last year. That was in 2021 as a four seed. Virginia lost to number 13 seed, Ohio. They're facing the 13 seed today. There's a whistle and there's a foul on the Cavaliers. And it goes on Gardner and Stan, that is his second of the game. Well, Pagese able to break down this Virginia defense and get in the paint again, Dan, because of a quick tempo. They're not walking it up. They're not letting Virginia get set. And so the gaps are bigger to drive the ball. And I, the whole thing started on the missed free throw. You know, everybody is down close to the basket on the free throw. And so when you miss that free throw and you get a relatively long rebound, that allows Furman to get out and go. I love their offensive game plan because we've seen it already today. When they've had to face Virginia's half-court defense, they haven't had much success. But when they can push, even in semi-transition situations where Virginia isn't able to lock in, they can get some room to operate. Shedrick back in. Gardner will sit. 
And Pagese at the line, 70% free throw shooter. Where they've missed some opportunities at the line. They have indeed. Now Furman, 5 of 10. Virginia at the line, 8 of 11. Half minute to go, first half. Driving his Beekman, congested. Traffic. That's Virginia's fourth turnover. Four turnovers each way, ne neither team turning it over a lot. But everything gets magnified in these low scoring, low possession games. As Dan just said, the free throw shooting by Furman will get magnified also. There's only so many opportunities in a game like this. Every one of them is precious. Furman has never led. They've trailed by as many as 10. Down by five now. And going for the last shot. Swanson hands off. The geese is on top. Bumping here into Clark. Down to two. Desperation three. And zeros on the clock. And the fourth seeded Cavaliers from the ACC with a 32-27 lead at halftime over the SoCon Furman Paladins. And we'll be right back to Orlando. Welcome back to Orlando. Look now at the U.S. Army first half stats. You see the three-point shooting, the plus eight in the paint for the fourth-seeded Virginia Cavaliers. With Stan Van Gundy and Dan Bonner, we'll check in with Lauren Shahadi moments from now, Kevin Harlan. Best two-point shooting team in college basketball, Furman. They're the ninth-best scoring team in the country, and they've got, what, 27 points at halftime. It ties their season low, but look, they, they don't face defenses like this every night. Sure. And Dan, what I worry about with Furman is you start to get frustrated. They're not used to grinded out games. Virginia lives in these kind of games. They, Virginia does, but if you're Furman, you shot 38% from the field, 28% from three, 50% from the free throw line. You're only down five. And what you're talking about with Virginia, they have dominated on the inside. They have muscled it. They don't have any threes, but that's because they've been taking the ball to the goal stand. Look pretty good in there. Yeah, Slauson, Jalen Slauson has shown us all his skills here on a short roll, taking it to the rim, dunking on an and one possibility, and then a strong right drive. The one thing Virginia could do a little bit differently with him, you gotta at least make him go to that left hand. So Virginia led it 17 to seven. Thurman, or Furman went on a 13 to four run to make it a one point game, then Virginia began to pull out just a little bit more. They've got the five-point lead at about as high as 10, and let's swing it over to Lauren. And Kevin, Coach Bennett went to address his team at the half. Beekman was giving a pep talk. Coach said, hey, it's my turn. His message, get back in transition. We gave up way too many threes because we weren't matched up properly. Coach Ritchie told his team we need to get extra possessions, make them uncomfortable. He said, Furman hasn't played a tournament game since 1980. You're the group. Play like it. Swanson will take it in. Lauren, thank Thank you. This shot will be over Gardner with a rebound corralled by Franklin. And that's a good place to go because Gardner has two personal fouls. And I, I, I think that's a big story. Gardner with two personal fouls. Bothman with three for Furman. We may have a clock issue here well, that they're they, going they, to address. Well, they've stopped it twice now and they've looked at the clock and they've decided there's nothing wrong. This is a four against a 13 in all four 13 matchups last season in the tournament were decided by single digits. Is, that's where we stand right now. Well, it's a testament to the parity in college basketball. These mid-major teams are outstanding teams. Wow, Slauson erases the shot. These mid-major teams are outstanding teams, and th this team is used to winning. And so that really helps. And this is really a nice job. You were talking about Slauson's offense, but he comes over and helps. They're talking, they want to make Virginia uncomfortable. That'll make you uncomfortable getting your shot blocked. Well, two years ago, he was the defensive player of the year in the Southern Conference. This year, the player of the year. And now Armand Franklin takes that great angle to use the glass. <laughs> you know, that's something, that, that's something I think Tony Bennett teaches from that angle. We want to get the ball up into the square. And I, think you're, in. I think you're making that up. And Franklin with a sly little grin on his face going down the court. Franklin, the leading scorer, averages 12, has four. He's got six 20-plus point games this season. Keen inside. 
And all kinds of traffic. Shedrick comes up with it and back the other way in the hands of Clark. I think Shedrick missed that, which is the only reason it wasn't called a goal tap. It's Beekman, third team all ACC with a whistle. It's on the Paladins, it's down low, and it goes on Foster for the first time. Yeah, he, he never, he never touched it. But it was a great rotation there, yes. too, by Armand Franklin to make that a difficult shot. Virginia was a preseason pick number three. They won their first eight games. They got as high as number two, then lost two in a row. But they finish in first place in the ACC at 15 and five. Shot clock at two. Crawling in, nice shot there. It's Beekman with 12 now. I don't know that there's a team in the country who looks as comfortable playing the offense at the end of the shot clock. Now, of course, it always looks comfortable when you make them, but... Well, but they're there so often, so they're not panicked at the end of the clock. They're used to playing long possessions. They just continue to execute throughout the possession. Keen is off and rebounded by Franklin. The tempo or the pace for Virginia, to your point, is 360th out of 363 in Division One. Franklin a triple. Lunging rebound right there by Foster. Here comes Pagis the other way for the Paladins of Furman. That was a quick trigger there. Swanson, Keen, Pagis thought three. Beekman is on his trail. Picked up there. Shedrick got it. Three on one. They try to finish inside and cap it. Shedrick does for the biggest lead on the Gardner miss. It's Caden Shredwick slamming it in. The other way. Buffwell. He'll get two. Fouled on the play. Wow, great tempo there. Shedrick runs down the loose ball and then gets a putback dunk. But Furman just comes right back at him. And Bothwell takes a contact and finishes. When he gets going to that left hand, Dan, and can get that right shoulder into you, he's so strong, he creates a little space and gets that in the basket. It's really a good job by Furman making Virginia pay for scoring on that three-on-one. If Virginia's got three-on-one down here, then Furman's got an advantage the other way, and they took advantage of it. You were a math major, weren't you? Three-on-one here, no, no. that must, we must be have more people <laughs> on the other end. That was good. It's like a word problem. <laughs> Except it's a math problem. Inside, good drive, hard shot. Clark <laughs> makes it work. Well, he had some good drives in the first half that he couldn't finish. That one, he gets in the basket. Bothwell, and it's Lawson's screen. And they stick to their defensive assignments. Foster. Shot clock down, now to five. Backing his way into Franklin. Out it goes. It's a three. And a miss right there on the long shot by Williams. They try to save it, the collision. A little discombobulated over there, and they try to Hoist everybody up and get combobulated. If, that, if, that's, if that's the right way to use that. <laughs> that could have been called a foul on Shedrick there. He moved right into Bothwell trying to save that ball. Well, and he moved into a lot of other people on that yeah, pitch too. And that's a big body moving into you too. <laughs> Beekman takes it in. Shedrick. It's Franklin down the lane with the whistle. And the whistle blown as he was in the circle, and the foul's going to go on Bothwell. It's picked up by the senior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, for Furman. And it is his fourth in. And that, that's, you know, he picked, up that, he picked up that third foul with 51 seconds left in the first half on a play he sh just should have gotten away from, and that's the problem. And, and this is a killer for Furman. I mean, they need him to play or needed him to play 35 minutes tonight. You saw those notes there. Bill Self not coaching the Jayhawks today. He missed the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. Working here, Clark, and they go in for the leaping Shedrick. The 6'11 junior from Raleigh. It's a three by Pagese. And a Shedrick rebound. Vacuums it in. Here come the Cavaliers. 
Shedrick's got a tough challenge. He's handling it well right now. But Bob Ritchie took Keen out of the game. So now Shedrick has to guard Lawson, who can really put the ball on the floor. Shot here by Beekman and knocked away inside. They get it picked up by Clark. Shot clock at nine. Driving on Pegues. Slithers in for two. What a great job using his body to protect the ball and scoring with his left hand. It's the biggest lead for the Cavaliers today. Nice move here to get the deuce. It's Clark. Sorry. Wes Lawson is a guy who can do more of that, but the Virginia Cavaliers, they've got 22 points in the paint, and they're all this. They're guys driving the ball to the basket. They haven't been doing post-up moves, but Virginia's ability to attack the basket, Stan, is really the difference in this game. It is, and Furman is choosing, right, to get out and play the ball tough, and they're choosing not to bring a lot of early help. Now, the positive sign, Virginia has only taken three threes and hasn't made any of them. But we're going to see if they can stick with that when they're getting beaten off the dribble like this. Furman and Purple with one score. That was a Roswell three in the last six minutes. Here's a Foster three. That's down the hinge. Gets it to go. We mentioned this before. They are number 20 in Division One in three-point shots made per game at nine. And Stan has mentioned a couple of times that you, this is a grind, and Furman has to keep grinding because remember what we've said. This is a Virginia team that is prone to offensive droughts. The steal, Pegues, numbers the other way. Hold on for Slauson. Shedrick will meet him. On tap, they'll reset with Foster. Driving here inside, Williams. And I'll tell you what, Williams, we saw it in the first half. Williams is a strong, explosive driver, and they've gotten themselves right back into this game. Williams made his first basket was a three, and so Virginia's pushing out on him, and he's been by him twice now. Clark and Pagis. Well, we've talked about Virginia's backcourt defensively. Marcus Foster is outstanding defensively. Franklin wheeling in. Shedrick grabs the ball. The old joust in there with Swanson with a foul. Oh, oh, they tie it up. And a timeout with 14.04 to go. One women's tournament on NCAA.com. It's a lead of seven right now for Virginia. Time to revisit our keys to the game, presented by Great Clips. Well, Furman, we talked about taking care of the ball. They've only got five turnovers, and five for 18 doesn't look great from three, Dan, but they've outscored Virginia by 15 from behind the arc. And the Cavaliers have actually done a pretty good job. Their longest drought in the game is 230. The Cavaliers have 48 field goal droughts of four minutes or more during the course of the season, so that's pretty good. That's amazing, yeah. And their defense has been really good. Driving is Beekman. Outside for Clark. Shot clock at four. Beekman will make a move. Oh, it's found! Inside to Ryan Dunn. I'll tell you, Beekman has had a heck of a game so far today 12 points five rebounds two assists two steals and was doing a great job on bothwell when he was in the game it's foster three well, that's what he does foster 36 percent three-point shooter on almost five attempts a game and he's hit two big ones here to get Furman back into the game and Furman has not been turning the ball over just two turnovers the last 21 minutes that has helped them. They turned it over a lot to begin the game and fell down by 10. Nice defensive play right there. Diving in there, Vanderbilt and out of bounds. Shot clock at 11. Well, we talked about Beekman. He goes up in the air, and lots of times when you get stuck there, you're in trouble. But Dunn does a nice job making himself available. And this time, Beekman simply doesn't do a good defensive job. you got to fight around that screen, particularly with Foster, who, as you mentioned, Stan, can shoot the three pretty well. Yeah, and both threes he's hit here in the last few minutes have been when Virginia went under the street. Three. Good! McNeely comes and he's got seven. Well, that's that great flare screen that Virginia does so well. Excellent screen, excellent pass. Pagese in open lane. 
Now they've got Clark. Swanson will greet him. And he just backs him out. Swanson's looking to switch with somebody. Donna just converted. There's a whistle. That's a foul. It's on UVA. And they call it on Beekman, who picks up his first. Now here's the flare screen we're talking about. Maybe a little illegal, but not too illegal. Only a little. And that one counts. And I'll tell you, I've been really impressed with McNeely watching them in the lead up to the NCAA tournament. He reminded me when I was watching it of a Joe Harris. Strong body. Can really shoot the ball, has great lift on his jump shot, and has a toughness about it. Top 60 recruit, the freshman. Here come the Paladins of Furman. Well, comparing him to Joe Harris is a heck of a compliment. Joe Harris was not yes. a good shooter. He was one tough guy. Phenomenal. Driving here. Foster. Beekman got it. Well, Beekman's doing everything. Defensive player of the year. Got a history of that with UVA. DeAndre Hunter was one, Isaiah Wilkins, Malcolm Brogdon, Darian Atkins. Two blocks now for Beekman. Here's a McNeely three, another one! And another one off the flare screen, this one up But in a different place, right. Two in a row, he's got ten. Witt and Swanson thinking three into Dunn, back to Witt. Eleven and a half to go. Williams will drive. It's a rebound in there by Ryan Dunn. Fourth board for him. That's some job by Murray to keep Williams away from the basket. A move here by Murray and Dunn. And now Beekman. McNeely, three off that time, and a rebound is hauled in by Vanderwall. That was a tough shot. Carter Witt did a really good job there, getting through three separate screens to make that shot difficult for McNeely. Dunn defending Swanson. Foul. If you're going to let a guy dribble the ball that many times backing in, there's very little you can do defensively. Dunn picks off his second. The sharpshooter McNeely, the freshman, puts it down from West Virginia for the Cavaliers. Cover, take a taste and see for yourself. There are 11 minutes to play here in the second half. And let's swing it over to Lauren Shahadi. And Kevin, the Furman Band had a trip to Ireland scheduled for two years. It was actually canceled because of COVID. So this band here today is from South Greenville University, nine miles away from Furman. The band ecstatic, of course, to travel the world. I don't think they knew that they were going to make the NCAA tournament for the first time in 43 years. Oh, what a great story. Well, except that, so you're telling me that the only people in Greenville, South Carolina, who didn't have confidence in the Paladins' chances to be in the NCAA tournament was the band? I, I don't believe, I believe the band had plenty of confidence, Stan. I think it was just a scheduling thing. I don't know about that. And here's my other thing. Yes, yes. If people from North Greenville University can get Furman t-shirts, I, I got to be able to get a Polka Dots t-shirt. I have to be able to. Well, we just saw that kid hit a three from Polka, West Virginia. He's out there with the ball, Murray. One, one, three, one zone here, which you don't see a lot from Furman, but trying to change the rhythm a little bit. And they're going to end up forcing a turnover. Great job coming out of the timeout by Furman. Seven turnovers by Virginia. They only average eight. That's the fewest in college basketball. Foster a three. Good! That's a very bad pass. You threw it right into the teeth of that zone defense. And the result, he turned it over. Now it's a three. Uh, yeah, and Virginia's going to have to stop going under on those handoffs with Foster. you got to get over the top. Well, this zone has them all, as Kevin says, discombobulated. A timeout taken by Coach Tony Bennett. His one-time lead of 12 is down to seven. Shazam, Fury of the Gods, only in theaters tomorrow, rated PG-13. Get tickets now. A look at Bob Ritchie. The last Furman win 
in the NCAA tournament was in 1974. They beat South Carolina. Just saw the baby brackets, and that's all a part of the winner of this one facing the second game today. Winner with a miss. And Clark could not hit. And here is Foster. Hounded by Clark to the rack. Rejected inside by Caden Shepard. He's got two blocks. At that time, Virginia did exactly what you said, Sam. They got Stan, they got over the top against that screen, but then he drove it to the basket. I'd much rather have him right now putting it on the floor, going to the basket, trying to finish, than letting him shoot the three. College of Charleston, San Diego State. Coming up. Winner here will play the winner there. He free. It's gathered up inside by Swanson. New shot clock with which to work. Nine and a half to go. Foster another three. And the Cavaliers control it inside. Shedrick playing Twister. Look at that. Well, and I love the matchup, Dan, from Virginia. Foster was hurting in the last couple of possessions. He a Clark, even though he's small, goes on to him. And all of a sudden, life's getting a little bit tougher for Marcus Foster. He picks up his second foul for Furman. He does, and I think that you can call that a foul when you're right on top of somebody when you're sitting on it. That's called a sitting foul. Yes. You know, there's cylinder fouls. That's a sitting foul. I like that. Let's see if Virginia can solve this 1-3-1 one, one zone. It's an experienced Virginia team. They've been to the tournament eight of the last nine years, but the experience showing off McNeely three. He hit a couple in a row and had the hot hand, but he's missed now two straight and swaps him the other way. And what that defense is doing is it's keeping Virginia out on the perimeter. And that's McNeely hit a couple, but that's Virginia just has not been able to score from the outside. And Sam Van Gundy swaps with the travel. Yeah, he's coming in here. Great defense there by Franklin. And he takes the extra step. And, and that's where the rules are a little different, Dan, because in the NBA, <laughs> that's not a trap. So Furman and Purple playing in their first NCAA tournament game in 43 years. Last time was 1980. They go outside. It's a Franklin triple and a rebound by Foster. And here comes Furman. And Swanson's got the ball. And suddenly the inside is closed off for the Cavaliers. They're going to have to make some jump shots. Bothwell. There's a big time triple. Ring it up. Well, it's not easy to sit for that long and come back in and knock in a three. But Virginia, at some point, Dan's going to have to start getting over the top on those handouts. It is a four-point game. Beekman outside Franklin. Approaching eight to play. McNeely. Just no movement by the Cavaliers on offense. Shot clock is down to seven. The cutting McNeely got it with a terrific pass inside. 12 for McNeely off the bench. And that's their first score since Furman changed up and went to the zone. Beekman with the assist, driving his Bothwell, machetes his way in. It's picked up by McNeely inside. He'll scoop it off to Clark. Well, that's what happens now when you get over the top on the handoff. You force him to go to the basket, take tough shots. Same thing happened to Foster before you change their rhythm. Great defense by Virginia. Beekman, Swanson on him. The fake, the drive, cannot convert. And he will drop it inside for Furman. That's a tough shot. But Furman matches up late in the possession out of that zone. But Virginia still standing around, as you said, Dan, very stagnant, not really recognizing that Furman has switched to man-to-man. -man. They get it inside to Foster. Great job taking advantage of the size mismatch. Foster buried him down under there. Fantastic call by Bob Ritchie. Kihei Clark doing a great job on Foster on the perimeter. Okay, let's instead of leaving Foster on the perimeter, let's get him in the paint, and it pays off. Clark to Franklin. Beekman finds Clark inside, and uh, there's a foul with a shove on the shot by Shedrick. It's a 10-2 Furman run, a 13 seed against the four seed Virginia Cavaliers. 
Dog fans, here is our story with Virginia on top by four. You see the shooting, you see the three-point shooting differences, points in the paint. That's where this game is countered, the heavy rebound advantage for the Cavaliers. Virginia's had the advantage inside, but that zone that Furman has gone to has eliminated Virginia's inside score. But, but the biggest stat in the entire game right now, in my opinion, is Bothwell's five fouls, and he's done for the day. And that was not a very smart play there on that foul. He just flat out pushed him with four fouls. Southern Conference scoring leader, leading the score clearly with Furman at 18 a game. Dan, that's a big miss, but now gone for the game. It is, and not only did he push him, he pushed him right in front of the referee. Always yeah. a bad idea. No, yeah, that was an easy call. I mean, you gave the referees an easy call. Swanson will drive and gets fouled on the track inside. Nice, nice play. That's a great play by Slauson, but it is a bad defensive play by Gardner. He goes for the ball and when he has no chance to get it and misses it. And then Shedrick, he's like in between. You know, if you're going to get out of the way, get out of the way. Don't hit him with the floor. Shedrick picked up his second foul. Slauson completes the three-point play. And we have a three-point game. Well, Furman has just been very resilient. They've been down 12 twice. And they hang in there, and Virginia struggling against this 1-3-1. The ball is sticking. Gardner inside. On the doorstep, Slauson will get the rebound. He has collected eight. Pagese, Foster, make it fall. Slauson will tie the game at 54. Foster was down low, but Slauson took it and fired and makes this a tie ball game at 54. Well, Slauson is putting on quite a display at both ends of the floor today. A very versatile player. Clark, three for the lead. Rebound, Slauson inside. That's his ninth rebound to go with 16 points and four assists. It's Heen. Furman has never led. Swanson into Gardner, shipping his way in. The long three gets your attention, and then Slauson puts it on the deck, and Gardner puts that hand out there, knocks him down, and it was, I mean, it just seemed like a few minutes ago it was a 12-point lead, and now Furman has turned it around as Virginia has gone cold on the offensive end. Gardner picked up his third. Furman is on an 18-4 run. Games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break presented by AT&T 5G in the March Madness Live app. Scan the QR code now to download. At the line is Swanson. He has been terrific. 18 points. And the lead is three. Well, think what he's done lately. He had an old-fashioned three-point play on the drive. Then he hit a three. And then he gets another old-fashioned three, backing down in the lane and scoring and getting fouled. Jalen Slauson has been the best player on the floor today by a large margin. McNeely three. Bean has dropped the ball. Approaching four and a half to play. So now he's switched. They've got done on Slauson. Pagis into Clark. Lost it, Slauson. It's picked up by Dunn. Tried to tomahawk it in. Hit the deck. They'll review it. Foul on the play. And they're actually going to look to see if any that rises up to a flagrant foul because he's up in the air. He's a vulnerable player. That's a hard foul. You know, the interesting thing about that, you can see in the background, he had a man there. It was a two-on-one. If he makes the pass, then Virginia gets a layup. But he really wanted to get that dunk, Dan, and get this crowd going. I understand that. 
They'll review with Furman leading by three. Driving from the wing, Schlossen was trying to block it. Well, and what we have here is we got a number of things we got to unravel. First of all, the officials ruled that that was just a regular play. The contact was not excessive and or unnecessary. So Dunn gets to go to the line for two shots. However, Dunn does have a bloody nose, and so he's got to go out of the game because he's bleeding. And any time that you have a guy have to go out of the game because he's bleeding, Tony Bennett now can put his own guy in the game, a substitute to shoot the free throw. So Franklin will be at the line. Yeah, they he has just, not taken a free throw shot today. Yeah, but they just went from a 50% free throw shooter to a 70% free throw shooter. With 424 to go in the game, Dan, if that happened to me, I'd hit him again to make sure he kept bleeding so I could put somebody in to shoot the free throw. Virginia, over the last seven and a half minutes, has one field goal and only two free throws as Furman has gone on a 19-4 run. Well, we talked about Virginia having droughts, and it hasn't been a scoreless drought, but they really struggled to score, and Furman has kept with it. The Indiana transfer, Franklin. And Stan, you've been talking the entire game, rightfully so, about the resilience of the Furman Paladins. Now, let's see what kind of resilience the Virginia Cavaliers have. I know they'll be resilient because we've seen it time after time. The question, Dan, will be, and you brought it up at the beginning of the broadcast, can they make enough shots? That's the question with Virginia. It's never their toughness, their resilience. It's can they put the ball in the basket? Furman's best scorer has left the game fouling out. Slauson, though, has been magnificent with the ball, and now they go on top, and it's Alex Williams, and back inside, it's Foster, rejected in there by Shedrick. He's got three block shots for the Cavaliers this afternoon. Now, with the exception of Shedrick, Virginia going with a relatively small lineup as Armand Franklin is in the game guarding Slauson, but Shedrick has really been a defensive factor today. He sure has. And you wonder, with him trying to protect the rim, if he will be open for some threes. In three over Shedrick. Foster's got the offensive rebound for Furman. Into two, out to Heen, and now Slauson. See if they post Slauson up against Frank. Williams takes it inside. Heen will pick it up. Shedrick blocked the shot, but nobody blocked out Heen. Well, drives create help and help creates offensive rebound opportunities. This 1-3-1 has changed the entire game. Beekman. In to Heen. That's a foul. Oh, Heen will pick it up for the Paladins, and Purple is third. Virginia was getting such great movement and such great driving lanes against that man-to-man. -man. That's why they had so many inside points. But this zone defense has caused the Cavaliers to stand around. Now Furman goes man-to-man -man on the baseline, out of bounds, and gives up a layup. They sneak it to Franklin. And again, Franklin on the defensive end is matched up against Slauson. That is a strength and size advantage for Slauson. Being with it, Slauson. It's Pegues, followed by Clark. Oh, nice move inside! He sneaks for two. Coming by three, Pegues with six. Only his second bucket of the game. Wide open, Shedrick. An yeah. easy two. Virginia's able to score, but interestingly, they can't get a stop on the defensive end. Pegues got the screen into a thicket. And a whistle on a foul. And defending on the play was Clark. And Clark will be assessed his second foul for the Cavaliers. Well, Virginia doesn't foul much, and they don't send you to the line a lot. But they're sending Pegues to the line. He's only two for five there today. But this looks like early in the game when Virginia was scoring on every possession. Now it's Furman. Pegues is 2 of 5 from the free throw line, 70% free throw shooter. On CBS Sports HQ for free 24-7 coverage.
of the NCAA tournament and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Those are two big free throws. Timeout, Virginia. Virginia. They've got one left. Furman has one. The 13 seed with a three-point lead on the four-seed Cavaliers. For the intense, action-packed Stanley Cup playoffs. Beginning April 18th on TBS. Don't miss a minute of the action. So Virginia had led the entire game until late here in the second half by as many as 12. Furman had come back on an 18-4 run. Furman has lost their best score, Mike Bothwell. He is fouled out of the game. But the team from the Southern Conference, the 13-seed Furman Paladins, hanging tough against the ACC Virginia Cavaliers at number four. So we've been talking about the Cavaliers needing to score. Well, they scored the last couple times. They can't get a stop. Clark into Heen. Shedrick inside. McNeely aims from three. Shedrick puts it back up and in with a tip. 13. Well, Shedrick made the great pass out for the open three and then followed it back up. Shedrick having a huge impact on this game. Foster three. Shedrick the rebound. Clark will go the other way. Shedrick's got 13 rebounds, five of them on the offensive glass, to go with 13 points and four blocks. It's Beekman, Shedrick, and Franklin. Back to the man-to-man -man now. Beekman on top. He is in the way. Shot clock at six for the lead. Five. And that's what Virginia's been able to do the entire game against the man-to-man. Shedrick is down low against that zone, and this is just a great battle. He goes right up over Slauson. If he tries to grab that ball, he gets it over the back foul, but he tips it with his left hand. Garrett Heen of Furman just picked up his fourth. At the free throw line is Reese Beekman, four of five from the free throw line, but all those shots happened in the first half of this one. And he's a 79% free throw shooter on the year with a chance to take the lead right here. Now we're down to 137, Dan. Virginia's played in a lot more of these kind of games than Furman has. And the other thing I will say is Virginia is very comfortable turning the game over to its defense. Even though Furman has exposed it a little bit here in the last couple minutes, the Cavaliers are defensively based, so they'll go, they'll go riding with their defense. Reese Beekman has just given Virginia the lead at the line. I'm surprised that we still have Slauson playing on the perimeter. Slauson had a mismatch. Shedrick takes it away on the turnover and a foul. And Stan not only playing on the perimeter, but playing on the perimeter against Kihei Clark. That is a bad idea. And he ended up paying for this. Kihei Clark makes him handle. He turns it over. And here's Shedrick again. He's picking up this loose ball. Most of the time you say, don't dribble it, but he dribbles it to get it away from Slauson and then is able to make a great pass. Slauson has his third personal foul. Here is Shedrick at the free throw line for the Cavaliers, a starter today. Three or four from the strike with his 13 rebounds and 13 points. He notches number 14 at the line there. And you don't see this for a center very often, Dan, but he's Virginia's best free throw shooter at 79%, four for five today. But there were a couple of times, particularly early in the game, where he couldn't hang on to the ball and he missed a couple of shots inside. But since that time, he has been a dominant force. It's Pagis to Heen and Shedrick defends. Foster. Approaching a minute to play. Pagis dancing with Clark. The bump, the spin, the turnover. Two possessions in a row. People trying to go at Kihei Clark, turnover. Kihei Clark does a great job defending the dribble. They're bouncing around a little bit. He's trying to spin. And even if he spun around, Kihei Clark was already in position. The winningest player in ACC history comes up with another big play. Well, he's played for 13 years in the <laughs> ACC. We're going to get now full court pressure from Furman. They will trap the first pass inbounds here. It's Clark and Slauson on him.
One timeout apiece. Beekman. And he's looked to drive just about every time. Works on Foster. Got the screen. The cutter. And Shedrick in a whistle. It was before the pass and a foul called on the wing. With 35 seconds to play in regulation. Foul on Foster for the second time for Furman. This is really a nice pass because Murray sees the dribbler coming at him, sees his man looking at the dribbler, and so he cuts back door. That's a great read on that play. One and one for McNeely. Has not taken a free throw shot this afternoon. Off the bench with 12. Sticks there, slashing ball. Pagese. Got to score quickly here. Difference of six seconds. Game clock, shot clock. They blew the whistle. Timeout taken by the Paladins and their coach, Bob Ritchie. They definitely do not need a three right now. I think what's more important, Dan, you just brought it up there at the end. You got to try to attack quickly. Not to take a bad shot, but see what we can get quick. Now, if the help comes and you can create a three, great. But I think coming out thinking we have to have a three, no. You can score, get in your press, foul again if necessary. And driving the ball to the basket, you might be able to get an old-fashioned three-point play. So you take the ball, but whatever you do, whatever you do, you've got to do it quickly. You do not have a lot of time to waste here. No, absolutely. And driving the ball, unfortunately, now Virginia's been in this situation more than most, but a lot of players don't want to foul in those situations. And so you can get relatively quick easy drives you know that Virginia will stay home on the perimeter not wanting to give up a three so your gaps will be a little bit bigger than usual and here you see our game summary our game reset Furman has no timeouts left but and this is important the possession arrow is in their favor the other thing though that's important is on the next foul if Furman has to foul it's not one and one anymore it's two shots for the Cavaliers Furman led 63-60. They have not scored in a little over two minutes. And it's All it. four 13 matchups a season ago, as we mentioned earlier, decided by single digits, and today falling right in line, four against a 13, three-point Virginia lead, 27 seconds to go. The Cavaliers elect to go with this small lineup. Foster for the time. Look who's got the three rebound. Down low by Clark with a whistle and a foul. Well, they were going for the three, Stan, and they actually, they set a pretty good screen, but Virginia defended it very well. Yeah, and he didn't, I don't think he caught it cleanly on the first look, so he had to come back, and that's where you've got plenty of time. I didn't like the shot there. If you got it clean, fine. He's an excellent three-point shooter, but this is too highly contested there by Beekman. Beekman actually touches the ball while his hand was cocked and ready to fire at the free throw line, Clark. Well, and this has plagued Virginia in the month of February. I mean, Kihei Clark shoots almost 80% from the free throw line, and I mean, this is an important free throw here. This is a huge free throw. That four-point lead is big. So you're gonna need two possessions either way. Drive that thing quickly. The geese inside, he rejected inside foul on Shedrick. With Virginia riding a 7 nothing run right now and 12.3 to go in a four-point game. Exactly what you were talking about, Stan. You drive, you force the defense to help, and that creates an opening. That's not an opening for a three, but it is an opening that gets him to the free throw line. It's actually a pretty good job defensively by Shedrick. I'm not going to argue with the referees on the foul call. But that help and recover to get up and contest, he is showing what a defensive force he can be. Now, for Virginia, you got to take care of the ball against the pressure you're going to see is the most important thing here. Get it in cleanly, handle the initial trap that you're going to get, and then make free throws if you force them to foul. Well, the Cavaliers are playing with four guards, and the four guards out there, along with Shedrick, are their best free throw shooter. Clark in a straight jacket. Oh, he didn't need to do that! He threw it away! He in Pagese! Furman leads! Timeout, Virginia! Did we just see what we think we just saw? Wow!
Jay Clark thinks he can throw the ball down the court and run the timeout, but as soon as that pass is intercepted, now suddenly you have a scramble situation. Virginia cannot set its defense. And another big basket by Foster. Or that wasn't Foster, that was Pegues. Pegues, who is not a great three-point shooter, but he rises up and knocks that one in his first one of the game. But Kihei Clark, one of the most solid point guards in the country, you got to know you have a timeout left is an option. And you also have to know that Reese Beekman is standing three feet away from you. You just pass him the ball. I really think that he thought he could throw the ball far enough down the court that the time would run out. Well, now what's important for Furman, you've got to make Virginia come back to the ball to catch this. You can't let somebody get the ball going up the floor with momentum because 2.4 seconds, Dan, if you're catching the ball with momentum anywhere near the midcourt area is a lot of time. You can catch, you can take two dribbles and you can shoot the ball. And if you can catch it at the midcourt line, that gets you pretty close. Clark will inbound, 2.4. They added a little bit of time. It's Beekman. Good if it goes. Furman is won. to Lauren Shahadi. JP, congratulations. You got the ball, seconds to play. What was going through your mind? I knew when we got the stop, my teammates would be looking for shooters. And I know he'd be looking for, G specifically, he looks for me all the time. My teammate, teammates believe in me, they love me, they trust me, and I love them back. And I just have full confidence. I missed all night. Credit to Clark, credit to UVA defense, but winners, winners make big shots. And I, I call myself a winner. Did you know, you are a winner now. Did you know it off, out of your hands? I knew it was going up. I had full yeah. belief, full belief in the shot. I've been missing all night, but that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I want to be in those moments. I was born for those moments. Furman has not played a tournament game since 1980. Why is this the group, JP? It's the group because we love each other. This is the most bond and most connected. We're urgent and we have a lot of joy uh, playing together. At the end of the day, I love this team. And I'm so proud we battled through adversity through the fullest, and I'm just glad we won the game. Enjoy the moment. It's yours, JP. Thank you so much. Kevin.